Hello, this is Jon Kobor from EMD. I'm going to show you a little bit about uh, things you can do in uh, Photoshop um, with uh, images uh, created in uh, photo montage in uh, WinPro. As you can see here, I have uh, set up a, a project uh, from the good old uh, Ableton uh, sample site. Uh, and I was out uh, on the ferry here a few weeks ago uh, and I took an image of the f uh, 4VHG standing uh, on the harbour side and um, unfortunately the weather was not so extremely good that day so this may not be a suitable image for a, a real photo montage but uh, I think it's good enough for this uh, demonstration here and now I um, imagine a situation where these uh, four uh, VTGs should be uh, replaced with uh, two uh, new ones so um, I have put in some uh, two new VTGs here and I calibrated the, the, fo the photo montage uh, roughly to, to make it look uh, as, it, uh, as it should um, and um, you can see um, to, to be able to um, to edit uh, or modify the, the image here uh, in, uh, in Photoshop I have to use uh, this new feature here in uh, Win for Free where we have a post -pro uh, processing um, settings uh, enabled you can see this new uh, button here and if I click on it uh, I can edit these uh, post process uh, settings I can try to click on this and it will open the, the camera properties uh, dialog and focus the, the tab sheet here with the, the settings for post-processing and you can see I have set it up um, this is not default but uh, you can en enable that it uh, should uh, save the, the image when you render it uh, in, in a photo montage and save it uh, to this uh, file here in this case I selected a PSD file which is uh, the default um, and um, I can after rendering it in, in, in photo montage, I can go and edit this uh, file, and then I should afterwards I should uh, save it as a, a JPEG file, uh, and that JPEG file can then be used in in the in the reports in WinPro. So um, that's the the main idea of uh, post processing. So if I now uh, select uh, OK. And uh, I try to render this uh, photo montage. Uh, the, the image file is quite big, so it's, it's going to split into tiles, and, and it's going to take a little while to create this uh, Photoshop file also. So now you can see I have this uh, two new VTGs, and if I click, click this uh, button here again, you can see now this uh, is. Uh, enabled before it was grayed out and that's because now WinPro created it and you can see the timestamp here but the other one is still grayed out because it doesn't exist yet I'm going to create that in, uh, in Photoshop um, I have set up the lights here in uh, WinPro uh, just roughly um, completely covered with clouds uh, but I could have uh, use the advanced light settings and uh, maybe I could have matched the, uh, the light of the, and the colors of the existing uh, VCGs uh, better I think but since I'm going to, into Photoshop um, it is uh, much easier to do it over there uh, and uh, also then I can show you uh, uh, yeah, well, the, the, the working process uh, in, uh, in Photoshop of course also if you have uh, other things you should do in, in Photoshop uh, it, uh, there's no need to, to spend a lot of time getting the, the light right here in, in uh, photo montage so now the task is to, to in, in Photoshop is to, to change the light settings of the new VCGs to make them look uh, more like the old ones and then to uh, get rid of the old VCGs of course which is uh, uh, of course important uh, in this situation so now I'm going to click here and if I click this one it's going to be opened in the default PSD editor in, uh, in Windows which is uh, of course uh, Photoshop so uh, what uh, WinPro has uh, created is uh, a Photoshop file here with two layers 
the bottom layer is uh, the, the original uh, image and uh, the layer uh, 2 here is the rendered image with the new uh, VGGs on it. And uh, what I would uh, suggest to do uh, normally is uh, to modify this layer 2 so it only contains uh, the rendered VGGs and, uh, and nothing else, so uh, not uh, the background image and all that. And uh, one way to do that, of course, uh, everything can be done in different ways in Photoshop, uh, but one way I found to do it uh, is um, to select uh, the layer and then uh, change the, the mode of the layer to, um, to difference. So now the black part is where the two layers are the same. Uh, and I can use that if I click here on the magic wand tool. I have set the tolerance to 3 and I don't use anti-aliasing but I do use uh, contiguous and I click here on the black uh, area and then I simply press delete. Uh, and I can s now it's deleted all the, the part of, the, of this layer, layer 2, where it is the same as the layer 1. And I set the mode back to normal and press Ctrl D uh, to deselect and I hope now I achieved what I wanted that uh, this layer 2 only contains the the rendered VTGs so now I could uh, try to uh, modify uh, the, the lightning settings here so uh, the VTGs, uh, the new ones, looks uh, more like the old ones uh, and what I would uh, recommend uh, is to use the adjustment tools, uh, adjustment, adjustment layers, uh, you can see here, because it's uh, uh, a non-destructive way to, to work and you can also uh, always go back and uh, make changes to, to what you do. So, um, if I think uh, this brightness and contrast, uh, the option here is, is good. You could have used uh, the exposure adjustments as well, uh, but the, and maybe some of the other ones. Uh, it depends on, on what you want to do. In this case I, I simply want to, to darken the, the, the VCGs a little bit and uh, brightness and contrast is, is good for that. I'm going to select it and um, you can see uh, it created an adjustment layer and the adjustment layer is default uh, make changes to the whole image. You can see here it, uh, well, by the whole image, I mean all the, the layers below the adjustment layer. But I only wanted to uh, make adjustments to to the layer right below it, uh, which is the layer with the VGGs on it. So now you can see if I change here, it's adjusting the, the VGGs only. So. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on, uh, on this VCG here, so I can better see. Well, I think actually I, I made it quite good here already. So something like something like this. You can see this uh, flicker thing here is. Uh, I think it's a problem with the my graphic card or, or driver or something like that. So and sometimes it's, it's behaving a little strange, but. Um, I think I will just say that this is good enough. Press Control Zero to zoom out. Maybe it's a little too, a little too dark. Uh, so I can just a little bit. Okay, something like that. Okay. Um, uh, well, just just for fun, I will show you that you can. Uh, if you, uh, on the on this uh, layer here, if I, uh, with the VCGs, new VCGs, I add uh, a mask layer. Then, in, in a situation like this, it, it could look like the the VCGs is going into to the clouds more or less. Then I could uh, use this graduate layer and and then paint. If I paint black on on a, a mask layer, it makes the VCGs uh, or <laughs> in this case the VCGs, it's gonna make them uh, disappear. So. If I do something like this now, you can see I, I made uh, parts of it uh, black and it's gradually go into white, and then that, that would make the VCGs go from invisible to visible. Um, 
and and uh, normally uh, you would not uh, take uh, uh, images and create photo montages uh, on, a, on, a, on a cloudy, foggy day. But um, I if you have a situation where, where it's needed, then uh, you can uh, make it uh, uh, look realistic uh, this way. I'm going to undo it, and maybe I'm just going to do it a little less. Okay, I'm going to uh, keep it like this. Uh, and now to the second task, which is to um, remove uh, the existing BTGs. So now I'm going to deselect uh, this layer and uh, I'm select this layer and press Ctrl J to make a, a, a copy of the layer and then I'm just gonna uh, deselect this one and make it visible uh, to um, and keep this as a as a backup because uh, now I'm going to to erase uh, some some things from from this and make some. Uh, some some modifications and if, in case I, I make a mistake or something I it's nice to have a, a backup uh, and I'm sure there's many ways to to do uh, what I want to do now but uh, yeah now I got some flicker from the from this graphic problem I have but um, one way I found uh, which is uh, uh, often uh, works pretty nice is uh, you can use uh, this lasso tool to to select the the VTGs like this that you want to get rid of and I'm just gonna do it like this I don't really want to get too close uh, I don't want to make an exact selection something like this should be uh, okay and now if I select the edit and um, fill and then uh, I use this uh, you can see there's many uh, different ways of, of filling uh, I use content aware which is uh, uh, then it, it fills out with the uh, things outside the selection and often it works very good and you can see in this case it does uh, control D well uh, I think this is very very good and Often I'm very impressed about uh, the tools in Photoshop, and then especially this one I think works very good. If if it does not work perfectly, then uh, I would um, f fix whatever goes wrong with the clone stamp tool. Actually, you could use uh, the clone stamp tool uh, to do this uh, also, but it's uh, I'm pressing Shift F5. Uh, Okay, the the clone stamp tool is is uh, is a little uh, well, it's more time consuming to, to work with, and it, it's it's very hard to do it uh, just as as nice as the as this. I would say I tried uh, to do it uh, many times, and it it takes more time, and it's it, the result is not as good uh, as this. Maybe you can see where it was before, but it's. Uh, 
I think this is very good. Actually, so if I again uh, show the, the layer with the new SGs, you can see uh, how the result is. Okay, I'm going to say that uh, this is fine. So I'm going to save the image and um, then I should also save it as a JPEG file. Um, so I'm going to use the save as. And then I simply select here uh, JPEG, enter. Okay, closing and I'm minimizing. So uh, now if I press this button you can see that uh, both these files is enabled and uh, you can say, see the timestamp for them is, is right now. Um, if I now press uh, render again then uh, the first file here would actually be overwritten again. So that's something is you should be aware uh, of is uh, when you <coughs> every time you render here in uh, photo montage it's actually overwriting uh, this uh, PSD file but it would create a backup uh, of, of the old one so all the work I just did in the PSD file would not uh, be lost but uh, it, it might be a little confusing if, if you're not aware of, of what is going on so anyways this uh, file exists. If I click on it now, it would be opened in my default uh, JPEG Edison Windows. Uh, and I can make even more changes uh, to that file if I wanted to, but uh, I would, uh, would not. I would instead I would try to make a, a report to see if it's uh, working as it uh, should. Now uh, WinPro would uh, actually uh, take a copy of this uh, PSD file and copy it into the uh, WinPro uh, project and, uh, and and save it together with the, the project uh, so it's uh, available for this uh, calculations uh, report. If I try and, and click on it, um, I fear it's going to pop up on uh, my secondary monitor. It does. Um, well, I'm just uh, getting it in here. So, as you can see, it is using the JPEG file I just created. Yeah, that's the way to do that. Um, if anyone has any good uh, tricks or suggestions how to do this better in uh, Photoshop, uh, I would uh, be happy to hear about it. But um, this uh, is at least the way uh, I found out uh, to do uh, things like this. So. Um, I would say thank you for watching and uh, goodbye. <laughs>